participants water policies and reforms in india have evolved slowly from customs religion and written codes various indian scriptures provide indications of water laws from ancient history water was considered indivisible water bodies were considered boundaries between villages to ensure that as many villages as possible had access to water diversion or obstruction of water was discouraged and the law imposed punishments on those responsible for polluting stealing or diverting the water destruction of embankments were was illegal a water controller was in charge of water administration kings were the protector of public water and were supposed to collect fee for crossing waters however over the period it changed even after 70 years of democratic setup the country does not have a formal water law framework that can be adopted at the national level unpredictable nature in terms of quantitative distribution for various purposes level of safe quality for human consumption pricing for various uses etc make it complicated to have any such law it has led to poor management of water resources and thereby increasing the challenges for future generations the term water governance is gaining popularity in the water management field for the last two decades now it is realized that water governance is essential for success in water management water governance refer to range of political social economic and administrative systems that are in place to develop and manage water resources and the delivery of water services at different level of the society alternatively put more simply water governance is the set of system that control decision making concerning water resources development and management water governance include special water related institutions legislations and for enforcement regulations strategies and policies that promotes stakeholders involvement in making decisions hence the government civil society companies institutions and non government organization can collectively shape water governance directions there is a profound political element in water governance hence water governance system usually reflect the political realities at the international national regional and local levels let us see what does the constitution say about water in india the primary entry in the constitution relating to water entry 17 marks it in the state list however the second provision via entry 56 in the union list allows regulation and development of water under the control of union declared by parliament to be expedient in the public interest many national institutions such as central water commission central board for irrigation and power central groundwater board etc have a planning advisory and financial assistance provisional role states can develop and execute their plan for sustainable management of their waters however any national framework law proposed by the central government must be passed or ratified by states the central government has jurisdiction over the sharing of interstate rivers and constitutes interstate water dispute tribunals overall except for interstate river water distribution the central government does not have a direct role in water governance which is by and large taken care by the state government and their local institutions in india water law or the following doctrine fall within the purview of indian easement act of 1882 which is a pre independence legislation if we talk about groundwater this act is based on the principle that ownership of groundwater flows from the ownerships of land section 7g of the act provides entry land owner with the right to collect and dispose within his own limits 
all water under the land and on the surface. This private ownership of the groundwater has led to unregulated use which has resulted in over extraction of water and a depletion of water table. Learners, riparian water rights is a system for allocating water among who possess land along its path. Riparian rights are natural results that occur as a right because of residence in a specific area. These are rights that belong to person who live on a shore of ocean or banks of a river or lake because they live there. Under the easement act, the right of a riparian, for example, a person who owns the land adjoining a river or a water stream is recognized by this right. A riparian owner is bestowed with the right to use a water stream that flows past his land equally with other riparian owners. A riparian shall also incur the right to have water come to him undiminished in flow, quantity and quality and go beyond his land without obstruction. Section 7 of the Act renders that every riparian owner has the right to the continued flow of water of a natural stream without any destruction or unreasonable pollution. The Easement Act of 1882 recognizes the customary right of riparian that are acquired under two basic rules. They are long use of prescription and local customs. However, even these rights are not absolute. After having understanding of constitutional status of ownership of water and right of state and central governments, now we will discuss the national water policy. The national water policy is formulated by Ministry of Water Resources, Government of India to govern the planning and development of water resources and their optimum utilization. The first national water policy was adopted in the in September 1987, it was reviewed and updated in 2002. In the revised policy, water was considered an economic commodity and recognized the importance of managing water as a common pool resource. The policy was again revised in year 2012. Some of the actions taken by central government in accordance with the principle indicated in the third national water policy of 2012 are as follows. Since the adoption of national water policy 2012, many challenges include water scarcity have emerged significantly in the water sector. Hence the process of revision of the policy started in November 2019 again. Providing drinking water and sanitation facility is one of the primary duty of governments. Various ministries share responsibility for water supply and sanitation at the central and state level. Under the Indian constitution and in our federal democratic setup, drinking water comes within the domain of state governments. At the central level, three ministries have responsibilities in water sector except the national capital territory of Delhi and other union territories, these central ministries only have an advisory capacity and a limited role in funding. Sector policy thus is a prerogative of state government and local bodies. There is no specific sanitation law either at the central level or at the state level dealing exclusively with the safe handling, transport and disposal of septage in holistic manner. Besides, no comprehensive legal framework exists on sanitation of safe disposal of fecal sludge. Environmental laws, municipal laws, different national and state level policies and programs regulate the right to sanitation and sanitation services in a piecemeal manner. Current sanitation laws in India stem from the constitution of India.